Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you like these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I'd be able to send watches like this to your inbox on a daily basis. And if you like our watches, you can buy, trade, and sell luxury watches, including this one, on our website, thewatchbox.com. The watch on my wrist and today's discussion is the Rolex Oyster Perpetual Yacht Master Reference 16623 Stainless Steel and Yellow Gold. The Yacht Master 1, not the 2, but the Yacht Master 1 was one of the last surviving 5-digit Rolex sports watch references, and it was only in the 2010s that the two-tone Yacht Master passed into history, so this is a relatively recent watch that in some respects is a throwback to an early era of Rolex sports watch feel and fit and specification. So this is a 40 millimeter watch on my wrist in yellow gold and steel. The timepiece is relatively slim as it has an 11.6 millimeter thickness, bezel, crystal, and all. Lug to lug, it's 47.3 millimeters, but if you were to expand that to include the solid end links of the bracelet, which is a 78763, it's a much more robust 54.2 millimeters, making this one of the greatest disparities between Rolex lug to lug and end link to end link measurement. Now, although this bracelet does feature solid end links like a contemporary Rolex reference, you find when you turn it over and you examine the bracelet, this is where the throwback elements come into play. So solid end links, but you do have hollow center links, so it's got a little bit of a vintage Rolex rattle in spite of the fact that this Z-series watch was made in 2007. This feels like a Rolex bracelet maybe from the 90s or 80s, and in some respects it kind of is. It has a stamped clasp, it has a stamped clamshell. It's in excellent physical condition. All of the volume and the definition, as you can see, is present and correct. So this is as good as it would have been in 2007. It just feels like a flashback to an earlier era. Just as the original Mini was produced into 1999, essentially a watch never discontinued, like a car never discontinued, a throwback to a kinder, gentler time. Now the watch is wonderfully ornate because the Yachtmaster was conceived in the early 1990s as first a case study of what a future pure luxury Submariner might look like, and later as a running mate to the Submariner, albeit kinder, gentler, and more suited to aquatic activities above the waves, you see that the case is not the super case profile of a ceramic sub. You can see it's beautifully fluid, flowing, sensuous in its curves, not squared off and beautifully tapered about its lugs, not overly broad shoulders. You'll also note in high polish, in 40 millimeters, it seems appropriate. It doesn't seem gaudy in any sense. Somehow, 40 millimeters and two-tone has become discreet by the standards of Audemars Piguet, Hublot, and Panerai in the oversized sports watch class. Here we have an all-gold bezel, and since the very first Yacht Masters, it has always been a full precious metal bezel. Bi-directional as well, since this is not a diving watch. Like I said, this is for aquatic activities above the waves, not below. If you happen to fall off your yacht, of which you are undoubtedly the master, this watch has got your back with 100 meter water resistance, but because the bezel is not life-saving equipment, you can use it for regatta purposes to line up with the minute hand, and now you have a zero to 60 minute timer. I find this is quite useful, perhaps more so even than a conventional chronograph, as it's far easier to simply read a big hand against a giant circular scale than it is to read a chronograph register. The dial is a wash in color. In fact, this is a colorful watch with a lot of charm and character. Silver, gold, red, and blue, and the dial is a special piece because just as the Yacht Master debuted a number of features that had been considered for the sub but rejected as too refined, so too did the dial receive a special treatment, what was known as the maxi dial, not to be confused with the old 5513s. Larger indices, larger plots of Luminova. This is something that wouldn't be seen on the sub until the anniversary LV sub of 2003, but the bigger indices, a permanent feature on the modern sub C, it got its start on the Yacht Master. So this one's robustly luminescent, and there will be a loom shot at the end. Sunburst blue dial, absolutely sensational. Let's get closer since the watch isn't on the wrist. You'll note that the sunburst is highly reactive, and it defines the dial. It explodes in direct sunlight. It's not a matte finish. It's not a gloss finish. It's an absolute 
being with an animus of its own. Never the same watch in any two angles with respect to bright light. This is a timepiece that makes its presence known. Yachtmaster inscribed in red at six o'clock, and somehow Rolex manages to break up the text on the style to the point that it doesn't feel like a novel has been written and it doesn't overwhelm, a quality that's been lost in recent years on Rolex dials. You'll also note the golden tone of the date disc, which is harmonized with the dial features as well as the bezel. On the inside, behind the screwed-in case back, Rolex Manufacturer Caliber 3135, automatic winding, 48-hour power reserve, 28,800 vibrations per hour. There is both a quick set for the date complication and a hacking or stop seconds feature so you can synchronize to a reference time. Full balance bridge and a free sprung index for shock protection, as well as an overcoil hairspring to give concentric beating in any position with respect to gravity and help the watch to achieve that chronometer certification. The timepiece does feature a screw down crown, and you can see though it's 100 meters water resistant, it does feature the triple dimple of a Rolex trip lock crown. It's robustly made. The caliber is tough. The caliber is precise. The caliber is all Rolex, and just to emphasize, how Rolex over-engineers its movements, they went with twin Teflon-coated reversing wheels because they didn't want the wobble of a unidirectional system. Not only did they go with the, uni the bidirectional system, which is smoother, but they actually went with a jeweled staff for the rotor, and they Teflon-coated those reversing wheels. So this is a Cadillac in, well, Cadillac's clothing. You can see it, throw it on your wrist on our website. And we're back with the Rolex Yachtmaster 16623. This is the Maxi Dial by Night. See the watch by day on our website.